Liberty University recently welcomed former Ole Miss football coach Hugh Freeze to campus to speak to the student body at convocation. It was the first public speaking appearance for Freeze since he was asked to resign from his coaching position last July in the wake of an investigation claiming he had made calls to escort services during his time at Ole Miss. I found myself on one side where I had to say to people that I love, I am sorry. Please forgive me. And today is really the first day that I can tell the Faith family, I am sorry. Please forgive me. Freeze, along with his wife Jill, addressed this tumultuous time in their lives in which their faith and marriage were tested. Coach Freeze then sat down for an interview with Game On. Well, Coach, first, thanks for sitting down with us. We do appreciate it. I guess as best you can for folks, walk me through the last seven, eight months for you, what this time has been like, but also where you feel like you've grown the most during what I'm sure has been one of the most difficult times or seasons of your life. It's been an incredibly difficult time. And while I um, don't celebrate the events that have caused the last seven or eight months, I actually have gotten to a place where I celebrate the results and yeah. the change that it's caused. Uh, uh, you know, the, the intimacy between Jill and I now and the transparency and the Communication is a, a level that we've really never experienced, even though we've, you know, been married 25 years. It's, um, and I think our kids see a, a difference that's going to model for them whether it's the effectiveness of a prayer life that we do together. That we have time now. You yeah. know, I, I get up in the morning, I don't have a whole lot to do. So, um, but the 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 process of of going through a brokenness period that. It really brings you back to who do I really want to be and um, and who really matters. Yeah. Um, because if you're not careful in this world, you, you listen to a lot of voices and things that really don't matter. And, and I was guilty of that. And and now it's pretty clear to me who matters and, and who you can depend on. And um, now that I'm at a place of... Uh, uh, of brokenness that uh, where I want to surrender each of my days and, and my career and whatever that looks like yeah. um, to to honoring God and, and my family. You've always been very outspoken about your faith. And so you could almost understand how some people would say, well, at the same time, while he was being so outspoken, he was doing these other things kind of in secret. That faith must not be authentic. That must not be who he really is. How have you, How do you try to answer those critics, or what do you point to to try to maybe set the record straight or show people that, no, this is faith, is who I am? Yeah, I, I don't know that I'll ever be able to explain that uh, to, to people who don't understand why I choose to be a person of faith. Uh, I think anyone that is a person of faith understands very clearly, if you just go read Romans 7, when Paul says, man, the good that I wish I do, I do not do. And I could go into a lot of things that happened back in my early years that, you know, having gone through counseling and listen now, I can see how that, you know, formed uh, this box in your mind that, that some of this stuff is kind of a root from. But um, the, the bottom line, the root is self. And I, I waited too long to, to, to try to white knuckle through something and without being transparent and and putting people around you that hold you to an accountable level and kind of help explain, you know, what's really going on. You've said you want to get back into coaching again and possibly even this coming year after sitting out this past season. How do you feel like you'll be different as a coach now having gone through this? And do you feel like there will need to be safeguards or a new plan of attack just to kind of protect yourself from anything like this in the future? Yeah, well, I'd already done that. Yeah. I mean, again, people think this is um, something fairly new. I really started the plan of, of safeguards and accountability and uh, back in 2000, early 2016. And, um, you know, and this it will continue for sure because this is something I never want to go through again. But I do have a strong desire to coach. Um, I don't think I will change a lot about coaching. Yeah or our philosophy, or it worked. Yeah. It was, oh, yeah. it, it was uh, effective in reaching kids and their families and, and uh, seeing impact that, that last, you know, I've gotten hundreds of emails from my former players, you know, just reassuring me, you know, man, the, the influence the program had 
on me, it works. So I don't know that I'm really going to change a lot of those things. My issue was a, a, a personal issue that obviously needed changing and safeguarding and, and confession and repentance. Last thing, speaking to students like you did today, what kind of impact do you hope you can be? What type of example do you hope you can be for so many others? Well, the only thing I could come up with for um, this going public and, and is, is taking me to another level of brokenness and then to using uh, our story to impact others through it. Because look, people are struggling in this world. People of faith are struggling. People in marriages are struggling. And if Jill and I can say, look, this is the way God brought us through um, the issues we were going through, and we are stronger than ever. Um, we're hopeful that, uh, that our story can, can impact others and, and they do the same.